Yes, actually in telecom already 100% uh, FDI has already been allowed and uh, the country has been doing very well and uh, lots of FDI basically come for the telecom sector and uh, these, uh, see FDI is not just money, along with FDI there's a technology, there are newer management styles, many things that come into a new country. So that way I think every country is benefited if it gets a big share of FDI. Also, sir, uh, how do you view India's recent space policy reform? What more should India be doing to become the effective player in Asia? Yeah, I think uh, this already, I mean, uh, technology, uh, the government and the department, they are always uh, technology agnostic. It never talks of uh, any particular technology to be brought in or not to be brought in. We are always uh, welcoming technology because it gives a, a, a bigger choice to the consumers which is ultimately it will be doing good only to the common users of the, of the telecom services. So that way it's always good to have uh, more and more choices in the market. Okay. Also, how do you see uh, demand growing for satellite uh, internet in India? Uh, it will be growing because uh, there, is a, there is a good amount of uh, areas, but mostly in the, in the village, rural and, and very distant areas where extending the normal modes of communication like optical fiber or the microwave, it is uh, very difficult. So I think uh, that could be, the satellite services could be an ideal replacement in those areas. So, and uh, the more these satellite services are getting customized for this type of requirements, I mean the size is reducing, the cost is reducing, no extra devices may not be required in future, the simple uh, smartphone may be sufficient to work on D2D type of services. I think it will have a wider acceptance in the Indian market as well. Okay, just one last question. Do you see India as a future hub for the satellite manufacturing or not? Always. See, I mean, uh, uh, India has uh, eyeing in a big way to become a manufacturing nation. Call it satellite or call it any other technology. We, uh, and if you see the new telecom policy 2025, which has been published very recently for the public consultation, so there we have uh, declared that becoming a manufacturing nation, it's a mission for the Department of Telecom. In the coming five years, I think uh, the department aggressively will be working towards that mission. Well, uh, I understand that um, in general uh, there is uh, a strong uh, wish, desire, need for uh, satellite services, for additional uh, satellite services in India. So it's fundamental uh, that uh, uh, regulations do not, ob do not create unnecessary obstacle for this need, but on the other end, they make it possible with a streamlined um, licensing framework. And what it is very important, it has been raised by several participants, uh, is that the final decision in relation to the spectrum allocation methodology is finally done and implemented. Okay. Also, how do you see the satellite industry evolving, uh, you know, over the next decades, particularly with the rapid growth of mega constellations? Well, uh, um, it is clear that uh, non-GSO systems are uh, now coming to the market. Um, they no, do not necessarily have to be mega constellations. For, for instance, Telesat Lightspeed is a constellation, but not in, is, a, is not a mega one. And what I foresee for the future is a synergy between non-GSO and GSO satellite systems, and also a synergy between satellite operators and terrestrial telecommunication operators. Okay, how uh, Telesat see the future in India and in India? So as I tried to mention during my presentation, Telesat will implement a business-to-business -business approach to the market and Telesat will work, so will not sell directly to customers in India, but will work with telecommunication um, operators and telecommunication service providers in India to provide services, sorry, to, to the end customers. And we believe that this is a sustainable approach for the overall telecommunication ecosystem. One last question, how do you see the entry of Starlink in Indian market and as a competitor? As a competitor? 
Well, Starlink has been the first to, to access the market, so it's progressing very quickly. But now other systems are coming to the market, including the Telesat one. And as I also mentioned in my presentation, I am convinced that there is room for more than one operator for multiple reasons. Um, one of which is that, again, we, for instance, Teletat has a different business model, which is complementary to the Starlink one. So this is the IEFI's second India Space Policy Conference. Uh, we had one last year, and this is the second one. Very, very successful. Uh, I think India has opened up the space uh, to the private sector, and uh, the way the policy has evolved, it is going to bring in a lot of new jobs, a lot of new investment, and we believe, just like what's happening in the U.S., we will have a lot of Indian companies working in the area of space and creating a lot of uh, uh, opportunities for everybody. Uh, sir, uh, you have said that it is going to provide a lot of job opportunities. So who are the partners who uh, will be welcome you know, for the program? Uh, who are the, uh, from the international partners and the national partners? So there are many companies internationally which are already working in India. Uh, we all heard about SpaceX, but there is uh, OneWeb is very actively involved, which is partly owned by Indian uh, entrepreneurs. Then there is a Teleset, which is based in Canada. Then there is uh, uh, Inmarsat and Viaset, which have already been there. And from India side, ISRO has always been there. But there are many companies like Kalexi or Dhruva Space, uh, which are already invested in India and have launched their own satellites. Also, uh, we talked about telecommunication and uh, you know uh, satellite-based systems. Uh, so, uh, what do you want to speak on the program? What are the best outcome? Uh, so. So what has happened is that uh, India has been working on a policy framework uh, for opening the communication sector to the private. And uh, the TRI has given the recommendations earlier this year uh, in May. And DOT is now trying to finalize those recommendations. These are very good recommendations. Actually, they are very pro-industry. Uh, they provide for a 4% uh, AGR as the fees for spectrum, uh, which is very reasonable uh, and up to the global standards. So we believe that uh, as soon as the DOT decides about the spectrum, uh, there will be a lot of new investment coming and we'll be able to connect a lot of unconnected places. We are al almost 500 million people are still unconnected in India. And uh, with the help of these satellite services, particularly the NGSO services, we will be able to connect a lot of those people which are in remote areas, which are in hilly areas, plus agriculture and education and health services these services require a uh, requirement of uh, satellite connectivity in a very big way. So all these services will improve in a big way. Uh, who are the companies you are talking about? You said there are many companies who are working over this uh, telecommunication system. So the companies I talked about like uh, Telesat, OneWeb, Inmarsat, Viaset, are uh, the global companies and then the many Indian companies as well. So I think that the challenges, you know, is that uh, we have great opportunities ahead of us. Uh, this industry has been driving and thriving uh, for the last five years, innovating as never before. And of course, with innovation comes disruption uh, and comes competition. So, you know, that, that is probably the challenge. Uh, but it's a good challenge to have. And GSO, as we represent 70 members uh, across the globe in the satellite industry, um, you know, our role is to bring them together to find solutions, to represent a unique voice so that we have a very important role uh, to play in the broader technology ecosystem with verticals uh, and, you know, a great role in connecting people, connecting things uh, all together. Okay. Also, how do you uh, see the satellite industry evolving over the next decade, particularly with the rapid growth of mega constellations? I think there is a lot of hype around the mega constellation. They are not the only ones evolving. They've been a great addition to the, the satellite ecosystem. But I think what we are seeing is really also, you know, a lot of innovation in non-GSOs and GSOs, so like Geo, Mio. Um, and so we're going to see more and more competition, as I said. We're going to see more and more services with D2D, IoT satellite and other services uh, and an outreach that is going to be increasing. Uh, for governments, citizens and, and enterprises. Okay, uh, what, what role does GSOA play in fostering collaboration between traditional satellite operators and the new space companies? 
Well, we are partners uh, with them. I think for us it's uh, always a great opportunity as a global association to play with local partners. Uh, and so for us it's, it's great to be uh, partners there to bring to the table the most relevant topics and ensure that we have a balanced discussion uh, across the industry. Okay, what, come, uh, what outcome can, you, can we expect from this event because we have seen the discussion and we heard the speeches from the uh, you know, prominent personalities, what outcome we can expect? Well, I think there are going to be many panels looking into this morning. The opening was more an overview. There are going to be many panels about specific topics. Uh, and what I hope is, is that there is a better understanding of where these you know, space is, where the satellite industry is, what are the needs of the industry and how we can work together with governments. What do we need to achieve full digital transformation with the, the role of, of satellites being central as well to that. Okay, this last question. How do you see the entry of Starlink in Indian market? I have no comment uh, on any entrance for us. You know, as long as there is fair competition, balanced competition, everything is good. So I have been involved with the IAFI conference for a long time, and I think they are exceptionally placed in India uh, to serve the Indian space uh, community in general, basically. It brings out internationally uh, the issues uh, and also creates a uniformity with, uh, with the, within the industry as well as within the regulators around the world in addition to the very important market, which is basically India. So it's an exceptional conference and it should be followed by, uh, by many in the, in the industry. Yeah, we talk about the space and the telecommunication. Uh, so how do you see the whole satellite system we are uh, discussing here? So uh, there are several things. There is uh, geostationary satellite systems and there is the new uh, technology, innovative technologies, okay? The GSO technologies are basically uh, well seasoned regulations are in place, they've been there for a long time, uh, although I may say that uh, uh, in the inno innovation, in the growth of the space industry, it still requires similar, uh, let's say, innovative solutions as the non-GSO. So non-GSO is uh, coming now. Uh, as I said in my presentation, we've been ready basically for the past two years to provide services in India. We're just waiting for the final touches of the regulations, which are actually very important. They are innovative. And I think uh, the whole industry will actually benefit uh, from, from those regulations. Also, how do you see the satellite industry evolving over the next decade, particularly with the rapid growth of mega constellations? So, uh, are you talking about India or in general, globally around the world? In general, basically, we are already uh, been around for the past 10 years, okay? Uh, OneWeb is, well, in fact, was the leader and the first uh, non-GSO constellation to be actually put into place. Uh, for broadband connectivity uh, in, in KU band, NKA. Uh, and basically, we have been promoting the fact that LEO constellations are going to be high data rates, uh, smaller terminals, uh, smaller power required by the terminals to operate, and actually easy to, to deploy uh, within uh, rural areas and communities that actually do not, have, do not have electricity. So we can use solar panels, for example. So we see that the uh, non-GSO mega constellation will, will bring in uh, the needed connectivity where today is very difficult to bring in with other means. So as I said earlier in the, in the panel, uh, jobs are created by the space economy in general. Uh, we bring connectivity where there is no connectivity today. That creates uh, that connect extra connectivity, that connectivity done, uh, given by uh, Leo Constellations will create jobs. Uh, basically new businesses or existing type of businesses for, for people that today have no capability of actually using telecoms basically, the usual, usual infrastructure. So that, that, that increases the purchase power, that increases actually the revenues, that increases the economy for that community but as a whole for India. So we bring in that kind of uh, additional connectivity required. So very, very important for the economy and the job growth because that, the economy growth will actually provide also job growth. This last question, how do you see the Starlink entry in the Indian market? How do I see it? I think it's great. Uh, uh, we and Starlink and uh, Amazon and other non-GSO players 
are important for the for the economy. As I said also in the presentation and the in the panel, uh, we need to bring in all the possible connectivity for for the communities of India and countries like India in general. Uh, and as I said, there is room for all the players, including the GSO, not just non-GSO but also the GSO.